Welcome back to another episode on Beho Reviews in Gaming and Entertainment. In this episode, we take a look at my favorite 16-bit music from the Sega CD. I know that many of you will say that it's a CD-based music machine rather than your traditional software that is included that gives the composer much more freedom. I won't argue with that since you are absolutely correct. The issue is that there are games with CD capabilities that still were not as memorable as even the old epic days of gaming. These are tracks that truly made the game better than it was giving it a complete package where the Sega Genesis was extremely lacking, especially to the Super Nintendo during this era. Snatcher was composed by Konami Kuli Ha Club in 1998 for Konami and released to the Sega CD in 1995. The game itself was one of a kind with its theme and music being of the cyberpunk fame truly helped its atmosphere. A truly remarkable game that would have done better in sales if released in the middle and not the end of its lifespan. Batman Returns was composed by Spencer Nielsen from Sega in 1992. Later in the Genesis era, it felt like no one was able to compose music like the older Genesis games with even Sega of America making their games failing in this department. Spencer Nielsen was a breath of fresh air, almost nailing original tracks for many of the different games for Sega. Sonic CD was composed by Spencer Nielsen for the American version of the game in 1993. I felt that this version was closer to Sonic than a techno version of the Japanese version. Even to this day, I can't get that Sonic boom out of my head. Selfie was composed by Meccano Associates in 1993 and was Sega's answer to Star Fox on the Super Nintendo. 
Although, now we know that presentation was everything to this shallow shooter, boy did it work with the immense battles and music that kept you pumping up the volume till the very end. Final Fight CD was composed by Manami Matsume and released by Sega in 1993. The first time I felt the arcade counterpart really came home with the music to boot. I played this game non-stop just to get to a certain level with his incredible music before I knew I could just play the tracks on a normal CD player. was composed by Seikop in 1993 and released by Working Designs in 1994. This game didn't have the graphical elements that the Super Nintendo had, but the soundtrack truly immersed you into its fantasy lore, easily making you feel that much more important. Lunar, the Silver Star, was composed by Noriyuki Awadari in 1992 and released by Working Designs in 1993. This was the game for me to finally challenge Final Fantasy on the Super Nintendo. The game didn't have the same special effects or visuals, but the music was truly stunning as the first real Sega CD game that pushed the boundaries of what the freedom was of having CD tracks and what they can really do.
Nobunaga's Ambition was composed by Yuki Kano and brought instrumental movie-like themes to the Mega CD in 1994, and it was never released in the U.S. I only was able to listen to the music through a sample of Sega's best Mega CD game sampler from the Mega Drive fan Japanese insert I purchased in Japantown in San Francisco from Kinokuniya Bookstore. of Thunder was composed by Shatoshi Miyashita in 1993 and released by Sega in 1995 as a port from the Turbo Duo. The tracks for the game is truly probably one of the best soundtracks I have ever heard in a game having you rock along as you play. Robo Aleste was composed by Katsumi Tanaka and released by Tenjin in 1993 and is the soundtrack that is my absolute favorite for the Sega CD. Each stage of this fantastic this shooter already comes time, with its own original tracks years. that feel perfect and this never out of place. That's it for me on this look at some of the best Sega CD music ever made. Please like and subscribe if you like my videos. Beho out and gray. Take us out of here and I will see you all next upload.